Okay, Susan, you ready? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Susan, how do you feel about doing a two-hour webinar right now? Ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I'm kind of overwhelmed with the amount of people. Sure. But so maybe we just need to take a collective breath. Let's just take at your computer screen. Everybody just breathe in and breathe out. And as most people know, <clears throat> I'm a very hands-on type of trainer, so um, it doesn't help. I mean, it's hard to be hands-on with over 100 people. So um, I will go very slowly, and I will repeat things. And I will tell you one thing that I've done here, you might notice that my slides look really plain. And that's because this is one of the principles I want you to learn when you're working with low level people. They're probably using their phones. And so the less busy you can make your slides, the easier it is for your learner to follow along. So that is why my slides look very bare right now. And um, let me go through the objectives for today. Number one, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for using Zoom with students. Now, Zoom is on the, uh, it's really getting used a lot these days. So it's, it's not as smooth as it ever was before, but it's still, for me, the smoothest tool I know for conferencing. Um, I'm going to give you some trip, tips and tricks for class. We're going to have a, we might, I don't know if we're going to get to three and four, but uh, three is we have a discussion of a learning the different learning management systems and how to choose the one that's right for you and the last one is apps you can use with your students if we have time so that's that's the plan for today so let me just start with this slide here um, so this is a pick a slide a screen share of my phone so I'm on zoom and you can see in the bottom right hand corner, that's my video of me so my students can see me. And um, I was teaching at, let's say I was teaching the kitchen. So I want to get a picture in there, but you notice that I'm using 30 point type. That is what you, you can see this nice and clear. You can't see the zoom stuff at the top because that's really small. And my picture is really small, but the 30 point type, shows up really nicely. So this will be the size font that you would use on your slides if you're gonna do PowerPoint with share your screen like I'm doing with you. If you're gonna do this with your class, you wanna have one picture on a slide and 30 point type and simplify, simplify, simplify. Susan? Oh, yes. Sorry, we've already had a question. Okay. Could you, um, can you switch over to present mode so you can make oh. the slides bigger? Okay, yeah, I can do that, but I like to see my little notes at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So you can see that this is my phone because I took a screenshot from it. So you could see that. And, and if you want to try um, doing Zoom, I would suggest, you know, using your phone as a way to uh, kind of, um, see what the students are going to see because most of our students will be using their phones okay so let me go to the next slide all right so zoom has a lot of settings i think zoom has too many settings <laughs> um, but there there are settings in the app this is the app itself so your students will download the zoom app and it's easy to, to get on their phones and it doesn't take up a lot of space um, and you will have all of these different settings in there. So um, I, what, one thing that I love here is that you can touch up your appearance and takes out most of your wrinkles, not all of them. Um, so you can actually, and then mirror my video, that, that will allow them to see you at the same time that you're screen sharing. And I keep it at the original ratio, but if you, if you have a lot of students on tablets, maybe you want to uh, do widescreen, I don't know. You don't want to enable hard, HD right now because we're already, you know, having bandwidth problems on Zoom and HD takes more bandwidth. Um, and then so you have to go through all of these settings and you have to decide which ones you're going to use and it's quite a few settings. So I would suggest just taking some time, go to your app and then you know the little setting button on your, your Zoom, there's this little, the little gear, G-E-A-R. Um, that is where you always go for your settings. You'll see that in the app. 
So just telling you, okay, now I'm going to show you the settings on the web version. There's a lot of settings. This is one of the problems, and you've got to go through them all. So spend, take some time. Imagine that you're going to take some time to go through all the different settings. Oops, sorry, I went too fast. Okay, let's go back. All right, so this is your uh, web settings, and here you go to zoom.us. As you can see on the top here, zoom.us, and you will have meeting schedules, you will have in-meeting basic and in-meeting advanced, and then how you want your students emailed. And um, I always suggest that you start with your host video on and your participants video off, um, because that way you can, you can manage the bandwidth. And then you have you know, telephone and computer, because many of your students may be calling in. If they don't have internet, this is another good thing about Zoom. If they don't have access to high, good internet, they can use their phone to just call in. They just can't see your slides. Um, so you need to go through all of those settings. Now, one of the really nice things, and, and I'm hoping that you all know how to get to Zoom and get on to Zoom. I'll give a pause there. And I'm going to start another poll. No, I'm not. I'm going to go, go on. OK. So Zoom has a lot of resources. It has different settings for um, computer screen sharing, tablet screen share, and phone. And the reason why it has so many different choices is because the real estate is much smaller on a phone. And I'm going to show you what annotation can do in a second because it's very valuable when you're teaching ESL students to be able to highlight and annotate stuff. So let's go back to the kitchen. And let me start an annotation for you. And I'm going to use um, the draw. And I'm going to take a circle. And I'm going to go, what is this? And somebody will answer, it's a microwave. And then I might do uh, this. And I can type in the word microwave, but not in blue. So we're going to change that color to, and I'm going to show you this in a minute. And when we go back to the, uh, black doesn't work either. Let's try red. Find a color that works with where you are. Oops. If that was my student, I would help them. Yes, there we go. So you can actually write, and you can circle things, and you can point to things, and you can use a, a, an arrow. And so it's really useful when you're working with a picture to have students practice and to show them where they are. So let me go back to the annotation screen now so you can, you can see. Let me uh, clear that. I'm clearing my drawing so that my kitchen is clean now. And I'm going back to my mouse. And I'm going to stop the annotation. And I'm going to tell you why I did all of those things. Let me go back. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There. OK, so what I used, I was on my computer screen. So I was using my draw tool to make the circle. And I was using my text tool to write the text. And then I used my clear tool to erase everything on the screen. Erase will just erase what you did. Clear will clear everything. Now, the one thing about annotation is when you finish annotating, it kind of like is a stop motion of your uh, video that you're doing on, in Zoom. You have to X out of here to get out of that stop motion. So there's that X button. So with this, you can do the, you can show a mouse. The spotlight is really nice. Let me take you back and show you what the spotlight will do. These are very useful tools for low level ESL so that the students can kind of follow along with you. Okay, let me go back to annotate. Let's show the spotlight. So this is the, oh, that's not the spotlight. This is the spotlight, here we go. So this is the spotlight, kind of makes you microwave, stove, dishwasher, curtain, cabinet, counter, floor. So this is kind of nice to show where you are. There's also under the uh, spotlight, it has an arrow. So if you wanted to do an arrow, 
you can have an arrow. So let me X out of here, clear. So Susan, this is uh -huh. Anthony. Just a, just a reminder. So people, we're watching, we can't see your, um, your toolbar. Right. We can only see you doing what you're doing. That's why I have this here. Yeah, you're going back and forth. Yeah. So um, again, yeah, as Susan explained, so she's trying to show you like some of the different tools that you can use for the students. Yes, because the toolbars do not show up when I'm screen sharing. We've learned this from a few days ago. <laughs> so I made everything, uh, I took screenshots of everything. So I was using the spotlight tool. When you click on the spotlight tool, you'll get the ability to use the arrow. And I think those are the most useful for when you're teaching. And now if you can see down on the phone one, they own, they have, you have the spotlight, you have a pen, you have a highlighter, but that's it. You don't have any of the stamps or the draw or any of that. And of course, on a tablet, it's all about screen real estate. There's only so much space. So on a tablet, you get all of these things. And it doesn't matter what tablet, it can be iOS or Android, you'll have these choices here on the annotation. And annotation, if you're gonna be sharing a, a picture with your class, annotation is really important. Do I have any questions about annotation before I move on to another thing? Susan, there was a request um, to maybe do that annotation example one more time. Okay. But, we're, but again, we're getting some questions about, um, I think that, Maybe there's a little bit of confusion on where the students are. Are they working on their phones and or are they working on computers or tablets or what? That, where... can, that is actually one of my poll questions. Let's find out where you guys are. Let me end this poll. 14 people, good. So most of us are beginning. I'm guessing the others, let me share this with you. Share the results so you can see your results. Um, I guess the other is probably multi-level. So I'm gonna stop sharing this poll and I do have another poll for you so you can figure out, we can see where you guys are. Because I think your students are gonna be all over the board with um, what devices they're using. So let me go to poll number two. And Susan, there was a question. So it's not that the students are necessarily doing the annotation, it's the teacher who's doing the annotation. In, Is in that this right? case, yes, in this case. But I, I'm gonna show you another way to have your students do annotations. But um, in this case, see, most of us are on computers. This is the case I've seen all week. Most of your students will probably not be. <laughs> yeah. And um, Susan, some of the folks are not able to see the polls. Oh, why it, is that? Um, it's, there was a comment that somebody can't see the poll on their phone. Oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't, I don't. So maybe on a mobile device, the, the polling is not showing? The polls let are not look, showing? Let me find that answer out. I'm asking Zoom that question right now with a phone. And some people are not seeing the poll, um, even if they're on their computer. Okay. I wonder he, if- It the, says is, here, oh, um, I have to put it in the desktop client that people on phones can use the polls. So this is what happened on this. When we went into, let me go back because this is actually a really good thing to talk about. Let me go back to the management. On this page here, the zoom.us settings, there is a setting for you to allow people on a mobile device to take polls. And we didn't set it. So you can't take a poll if you're on a mobile device. So that's why most of us are on computers, because if you're on the mobile device, you might not be able to see the poll because we didn't set the setting, which is, I'm sorry, here. <clears throat> It's probably an advanced, in meeting advanced. So once again, that's something we just learned, which is, it's all been about learning. <laughs> Susan, I'm wondering too, for some folks on computers, um, I'm wondering if the poll window opened up maybe behind the Zoom screen. So you may wanna check, if you go up on a Mac, um, go up to the window tab, um, and it should tell you how many windows and what windows you have open. So maybe see if the poll window opened up, you know, maybe behind another screen or something. And if you can't, um, I'm just curious because some people are on the phone and they're polling. So I don't know how that's happening, but if you're not able to poll, can you, is it too much, Anthony, if somebody just types like no on the chat pod? 
so we can see if if they don't how many people don't see it oh yeah we've been getting comments about people who can't see okay. it because but, some people can see it because they've got i've got five percent of the people who are using a phone <laughs> yeah so some people can see it Susan, this is Maricel in San Francisco. Uh -huh. I asked this question yesterday at a Zoom uh, training, and apparently if you are in a Zoom app versus a web-based Zoom interface, you have different functionality. Correct. So, um, and that is the reason why sometimes polls do not show up. Yes, and it says here that I need to make sure that I activate the poll on the this this zoom.us web settings and I, I did not so that's probably part of the problem so I'm going to share this with you just so you can see it um, also the one of the problems with polling is that only paid users can poll and I wonder how many of you are getting a paid account of zoom to use so um, that's another thing to think about. Polling's great, but there, there, you can use other apps for polling if you want to poll your students. All right, so, so as we were saying, did we want to annotate again? Is that what we wanted to do, Anthony? Yes, there were a couple of requests to maybe just show some of the basic annotation um, okay. things that so, you showed us. So just remember, they're different on different devices. So if you have a computer, you're going to get all of this. If you have a phone, you're only going to get the bottom over here. So let me go back and I'll show you. Oh, I'll go back and show you. Here's my kitchen. OK. And I'm going to go to my annotate. Let me stop sharing the poll. Hey, Susan. Yeah. Um, this is Lisa. I just wanted to let kind of chime in real quick because I'm doing the Zoom on my phone this time instead of my uh -huh. computer. And like it's a lot of trial and error because there's different ways to get to certain things on the phone. And so sometimes you're swiping to get to the, you know, going back to a page or looking at your screen. Yeah, I have, I have that later chat. on. I have that later Okay, on. just those, in case other people are on their that. phone and they're a little bit confused why they can't see certain things or they can't remember how to get back to the chat or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should actually have, a, I have a slide on that. And but, Susan, yeah. so um, you, have a, you have a screenshot of the annotation bar, but again, can you tell us how, where, how does the annotation bar show up? Okay, so you see on my slide here where you have me share, I have the share screen and it says stop share. Right above that, you see the little thing that says annotate. If you click on that annotate, you will get your annotate toolbar, which you cannot see because I'm screen sharing, but you saw it on that other slide. Okay. Right. So maybe so what I should do, maybe what I should do, Anthony, is mm -hmm. I should bring that other annotate bar on this slide so that people can see what, what it's going to look like. Because you can see the word annotate on this slide. Okay. And you click on that or push it if you're on your phone, and then you get the bar. Okay, so you're signed into your you're signed into your Zoom room as a host, and then yeah. the annotate is something that shows up on the bar. Yes, let me let me. I, I don't. I yeah, you're not going to see it, but you might. Do you see it as a co-host? Uh, do I see it as a co-host? No, let me let me go back to so. small for a minute because I really want to. I want to take this bar here and copy it into the other slide to make it easier for people to understand. I can see that I've been doing some messy stuff here. Okay. Yeah, actually, Susan, I have it. And I think actually um, our folks, our participants also have it too. I think this is one of the problems that we run into is that people accidentally hit the oh. annotate and then oh, they start drawing right. all over okay. the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's cool. I can, uh, I can clear it. So let me go back to annotate. Let me clear it. Not a problem. Clear. This one's not clearing. Clear all drawing. Okay. So um, yeah. So this is this, the annotate here. And so I'm going to go up to annotate and then I'm going to have this bar up here. On a phone, I have fewer items. And then I can do, um, so let me show you again, spotlight. This is like a, a big mouse. I really like this. It's really easy to see. Plants, sink, faucet, 
hand towel, which is very important these days, um, canister, I can teach as much as I want on this picture, and just have students repeat. I can, and then if I want, I can have them, um, I can have them, um, oops, sorry. I gotta stop this one. And then I'm gonna take an arrow. Now the arrow is also under the spotlight button. Oh, of course, now I, hold on. I have to stop this for now and go back to my slide. Please feel free to annotate away so you can play around with it. I don't mind, I can clear the screen quite quickly. There you go, let's try to annotate. Try some text in there. Try writing on the picture or something, like, like you're teaching students and you want them to know the word. There we go, thank you. All right, so everybody's doing very good with the annotation. You can see how useful this can be with an ESL class. And shall I now clear it? <laughs> As everybody's having fun with it, that's great. Let's clear it. Clear all drawings. Okay, I think we're done. We'll just move on. I think everybody understands annotating, Anthony. But I have to stop. The one thing you need to remember about annotate that I always forget is that you have to hit that X when you're done or you continue to be annotating. Okay, so let's go forward. Susan, yes, question, gonna, would you yeah. happen to know why some, for some of us, some people aren't able to actually bring up annotate. Do you, is there any reason why some of us can and others of us can't? I any don't, ideas on that? No ideas on that. Okay. Is it, is it, can we ask what device, the people who cannot annotate, what device are you on? Uh, somebody said she, he or she's on a Mac, uh, Macs, laptops, Mac laptops, Chromebooks. No, they should MacBook have annotate. Airs, some peop, someone said a PC, a couple PCs, iMacs. Yeah, so all kinds of devices. That's weird. Um, it may be that maybe people aren't looking in the right place for it. Yeah, let me go back to my kitchen. Let me, I got to stop annotating again. Okay, let me go back to my kitchen. It's not really my kitchen. But, um, and this, this, you see the, the stop share and then you see the green with the room number and right above that there's that word annotate and if it's not there you might want to click on those three buttons the three dots where it says more and see if annotates in there susan also view options is a drop down from which is next to the green um, bar that says you're viewing susan gare's screen view options yeah, there's a there's a drop down. Um, I think everybody has it. So um, it says view options. And I think depending on well, um, you can size your window, you can, it looks like annotate is showing up for everyone as well. Yeah, and people are annotating away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think they get it. <laughs> yeah, It could just be that folks that are weren't quite sure where the right. Where the command but was. it looks like I mean, it looks like all 300 people are anything. Stop we, annotating. We do have a comment that um, when asked Zoom about differences in functionalities, they told um, this particular user to remind learners to make sure they have the latest version of Zoom on their phones or on their laptops. Yes. And probably if they download Zoom now, they will have that. Okay, we got to stop annotating. Clear viewers drawings. Okay. And Victoria, I'm not gonna give you remote control of my shared content. So I will decline that. Okay. All right. So going back here, we're gonna move on from annotation, but I have to keep clearing all this. Clear viewers drawings. Okay. Okay. Oh, what happened here? Okay, class, we're gonna stop annotating. <laughs> so, everybody, take stop your hand. Look at annotation button. Yeah. Susan, then, you have to make sure that you teach the word annotate first. 
so Correct. people understand what you want them to do. Correct. And I actually I just, have, have a slide like that, but we're not getting anywhere because we're still annotating. <laughs> right. So Susan, um, again, just a reminder, um, if people want to stop annotating, so look for the annotate bar that has all the commands. And there should be a little red X in one of the corners, either upper right or upper left corner of the bar. And that Correct. will close annotate. Correct. So let's, let's, let me clear again. Okay, gonna clear one more time, clear all drawings. Okay, we're clear. But now we have something else going on here. So how did this get there? Okay, hold on a second. I'm just gonna, okay. No, we're not stopping the annotation yet. Okay. Okay, so let me go to the next. We got annotation down, I feel confident that you guys know how to annotate, which is great because it's good for ESL students. So now I have again, uh, teaching the students, you need to teach students new vocabulary. There is new, new critical vocabulary. Probably annotate is one of those I should have for the next session, annotate. But also you need to teach the students what mute means. And you need to teach them unmute. And um, we had a, in the Katisal workshops that we've been doing, we had a, a student from, a person, a teacher from Guatemala, and he said mute in, in Spanish is silenciar, but there's nothing for unmute except no silenciar. <laughs> he didn't really, because his English was so good, I just don't think he knew how to, how to translate the unmute, it was just interesting. Um, so I actually have a screenshot here to show the students that their, this audio, this is on the phone, is muted and this is not muted so this way you can teach them to mute and unmute and I have an activity here and um, Anthony I'm gonna let you say one person ask one person to mute to unmute her microphone and say hello we're not gonna do everybody in the class but Anthony picked two people and where it says Mark ask Michelle to unmute her microphone you're gonna put two different participants in there. So, Elisa T, mute your microphone. No, no. Elisa oh, no. T, ask Anthony. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Elisa T, please ask another student to mute their microphone. Well, I think everybody's muted, so unmute. Oh, okay. One sorry. more time, Anthony. It's a good student. <laughs> I'll get it. Third time's a charm, right? Yeah. Okay, let me, Elisa, you're unmuted, right? Alisa. Yeah, he's muted. Oh, okay. I'm muted? Yeah. No, 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 stay. Don't, don't touch anything. Alisa T, please. Oh, uh, now I forgot what I'm doing. Alisa T, <laughs> please ask another student to mute their microphone. Unmute, unmute. Unmute their microphone. Thank you. And say hello. Okay, let's see here. Um, Just pick somebody. Alisa. Alisa, Alisa you need, you, there. Can, can you? Yes, there? yes, 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 yes. Uh, Christina Lett, please unmute your microphone. And say hello. No? Okay. Say hello after you unmute. Go ahead, say hello. I can hear you a little bit. All right, maybe we ask somebody else. Okay, so okay. let's- Okay, so how about this? How about Adrian? Adrian, can you please unmute and say hello? Hello, everybody, this is Adrian. Okay, Adrian, ask Anthony to mute his microphone. Anthony, can you please mute your microphone? Yes, I can. Okay, so this is what you wanna do in your classroom because even us, you can unmute now, Anthony, because you need to talk. Um, you need to practice this. I would say the first class you have with the students, just have the whole class go through and do this activity where they mute and Saying unmute. hello. Yes, yay, that's Christina, right? Christina. Okay, so you want to do this activity with your class and have each, we can't do it with 300 people, but, um, or 200 people, 
but I would do this with my entire class and have each person mute and unmute, mute and unmute. And when you finish this practice, they're gonna know how to do it, correct? Hello. 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 That's Christina. <laughs> Great. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the wrong microphone. <laughs> well, that's a learning experience, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so once you teach them how to turn on, turn mute and unmute their microphone, then you have to teach them how to turn on and off their video. And um, on Zoom, it says stop video. So that's the words I'm going to use with my students. So we're not going to do this with everybody, but just to show you that you can do it, may I say, Cindy, would you please ask, hold on, I just lost my list of people. Let me find people. I will do this one. Um, Cindy, is it Cindy? Yes. Okay. Cindy, would you please ask Armando to turn on his video? Armando, can you please turn on your video? It's Armando Duarte. Okay. I see he did that. Very good. Or she, he. Um, so go ahead, Armando, can you please, you need to unmute your microphone so you can talk to somebody. You can turn off your video and then please ask Adrian to turn on her video. Adrian, can you please turn on your video? So this is exactly the, what I wanted to, to show you is that you can actually practice this with your class so that they can learn how to turn on and off their video. Because I know we can't do this with 200 people, but you really need to see your students. So when you talk to them, you ask them to turn on their video and then they can talk and then they turn it back off. So any questions about teaching these critical words, annotate, mute, unmute, and um, stop video and turn on video. Can I interrupt for one moment? With uh -huh. a I'm a complete beginner and we've gone um, straight to the specifics. And I, to tell you the truth, I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know. So you asked at the beginning, do we know how to get to Zoom and start an account? Um, I'm just wondering if we could back up for one moment just to talk about the overall uh, purpose. Absolutely. Or we are. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So yeah. this is to get Zoom. You just go to zoom.us and you can, I'm signed in here, but you can get a free account. And you do that by registering. Well, actually, let me stop sharing and I'll take you there. And Susan, even more basic. So why would we, why would we as a teacher use Zoom? So that you can do your face-to-face -face part of your class that your, your students are dying for you to talk to them. And that is why I would use Zoom. So let me, I'm going to share the Zoom screen with you in a second. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear Susan. you. This, is, this oh. is Elisa. I'm sorry. This is Elisa. I'm so sorry. As soon as I went to go do the activity with Anthony, my phone died. I, it froze. It just got me out of Zoom. And then my computer froze. So this happened in another session that I was at. And, and I don't know how you guys resolved not hearing me or not having me in the activity. But um, it's probably a good teaching moment, too, for all of us. Because it's, it's going to happen with our students. Yeah. Um, Correct. You know, they're going to have troubles with their, their devices and things like that. And like, how do we work through that? Correct. And um, so one thing I want to say is just because your learners are beginner, beginning level doesn't mean they can't do this stuff. This, is a, a, this has really nothing to do with language. This has to do with being, learning to be more tech savvy. And your students may actually be more tech savvy than you are. So um, it's not a problem with them being low level in language. So here, sign up, it's free. That's where you go, you go there. And I can't do it because I have too many Zoom accounts as it is, but you just sign up here. And if you have a Google account, sign in with Google because then you don't need to remember your password. It just uses your Google account. 
And then after you do that, um, and Anthony, answer if you think you can answer this. Does, does this app show up automatically or do you have to, you don't go anywhere to download it. It's just like when I became, got an account, it said download the app and I did. So, um, so I've had it on my phone for a while and I don't remember exactly what happened. I, I might have downloaded an app though. Yeah, on the phone, when you give your students the link to Zoom, and they, so let me show you this actually. Let me, let me, I'm gonna um, sign in just so you can see. Once you get an account, you can sign in. And um, I can't really sign in with this account. Can't sign in with that account. Um, I can try this account. I'm not gonna go to a room, I'm just gonna sign in. Yeah, let's try this account. Okay. So here is where you schedule your meeting. So you schedule a new meeting and then you're going to say my English class. Or you can even put your name like Susan's, you know, your teacher, your students, how they ever they know you. That's what you want to use here. And then classroom meeting and then put the date in. Let's say it's on the 27th and it's at 3 p.m. And it's, I, I, I want to talk about the time duration. I don't suggest if you have a three hour class that you have a three hour Zoom meeting. I think if you have a one hour meeting and you just get the students communicating with each other, that's great. So let's just keep it at one hour. And then this is really important, meeting ID. If you go here to personal meeting ID, this is the same room. Your students are going to go to the same room every time. And once you get them in the room the first time, they'll be able to come back to that room because it's always going to be the same number. So I would make sure that you select personal meeting ID and no password because that's just another barrier to the students. And I would suggest turning off all this stuff so they don't, they, they cannot use their video. Oh, you want to be on though, because they need to see you. Turn the video off. And um, you can have the audio be both computer and telephone, because some of your students may call in. And remember, if you're not, if you're just doing a conversation practice with them, you can actually have them call in and they won't see the screen, but they'll be able to talk to the class. And then you so, save it. And I'm not going to save it. Can I say something really quickly? Uh -huh. If you uh, log in with your, if you create a Zoom account with your school uh, email account, you get unlimited time. Correct. For, for 30 days. I don't know if it's going to be forever. Susan? Yes. <clears throat> Do you happen to know what confer Zoom is? Yes. Confer okay, so there's a couple of questions about confer uh -huh. Zoom. Can you okay. just quickly describe the difference? Okay, confer Zoom is the community college non-credit Zoom room, and it's a professional meeting room, but it's owned by the chancellor's office. And he, the chancellor has, the community college of California has bought into Zoom big time. So you can, if your students know that, room you can use that you don't need your own you don't need to get a free zoom account you can just use the other one but you need to know your password and your your username to get into that confer room and if you don't know it there is a help desk the community college has you can ask another question uh susan is uh do your students have to download zoom i yeah they will when you when you give them the 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 meeting ID and I'm going to show you. So after I finish here, let me just continue a little bit. I'm not going to save it, but let's just pretend I save it. Okay. Then it's going to take me to my calendar, my Google calendar, because I told it to. When you first set up your Zoom account, I'll ask you what kind of calendar you want to go to. And um, here I have a, a Zoom meeting. This is the one I, let's say I sent in. Then you can go here and you can actually invite your students one by one this way. And they will get a, they will get a link that will tell them where to go and tell them, um, and all they need to do, they go, they'll get a link in their email and they just click on it and it will take them to your Zoom room. So you don't have to do anything more than schedule the meeting and then put, give them the email. Or some people have been using WhatsApp, which is a, a, chat, a text program, and some people have been using Remind to get these links out to their students. 
If you're currently using Remind, you can just text them the link to the room. And like I said, once they've done it once, it's always the same room. So it'll be easy for them to get on. And when they get the link, it'll, when they push on that link, it'll take them to the Zoom room and it'll probably say, you need to download the app, press here, you press there and it downloads the app for you. It's very simple. I have had my students doing this and it's very simple. They just need to push a, on the phone. It'd be nicer if you could be there to show them how to get the app, but since you can't, it won't be that hard. And if it is, you can just it, talk to the student individually to help them through the situation. So does that help? Um, I'd like to also kind of let you know that if even if we needed a more specific kind of Zoom assistance, um, there's always the OTAN office hours as well, in addition to maybe looking into um, a Zoom basics for those of you who kind of want to understand the, where to start. So um, Anthony, just remind everybody of the OTAN office hours. <clears throat> yes, so currently we have them scheduled for three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday uh, starts at one o'clock, Wednesday starts at four o'clock, and Friday starts at 10 o'clock. And if you go to the OTAN um, homepage, OTAN.us, we're gonna, we'll have that schedule posted up again. There. Okay, so I think I'll just, um, move on. So now we need to teach the students how to use the chat box, which you all see. You have a chat box, right? So um, let's take a look at your chat box. If you go to your chat boxes, everybody can you go to the more and you'll see chat. Yeah, you know, the, I see somebody keeps getting kicked off. Um, yeah, this, okay, so I want to answer Amy's question. Literacy students, I, I made a very clear description in here that this is not for literacy students. That if you have literacy students, I don't know how many you have, but if you have a whole class, you're going to have to do something else. Um, I, I don't recommend doing this with literacy students necessarily, but beginning low, I do it with all the time. So um, it's, it's, you take them very slowly through these. Don't think you're going to get through. You might get one class and you just do mute and unmute. That's it. The second class, you do record, stop video. Record, oh, turn on video, stop video. That's a whole class. And you have the students practicing and talking. Ask them how they are doing, and, and that's all you do. Um, but the getting kicked off of poor connection is because we were not ready for this virus. <laughs> that's all I can say. And everybody's using the same program at the same time and Zoom has overwhelmed themselves, but it works the best there is. And so try to oh, have a positive mind frame and think to yourself, your students can do this. If you think they, I really believe in positive mindset. If you think they can do something and you are optimistic about it, they can do it. Hey, Susan, sorry, yes. there was, I'm just watching the, the comments in the chat. Um, so maybe to, as a suggestion, maybe the first step is actually to try to send a video to your students. I mean, that's probably a whole different lesson, but some sort of, you know, you, we need to reach out to these students some way. And I'm not sure that texting people, well, emailing people or texting people is, is going to get it, especially with the language. So maybe it's video and, you know, maybe it's a super simple video, something like that. Actually, I think texting is probably the best. That seems to work the best with me and with my students because they all have text. Right. And I want to tell you this text. Uh, so I, I used Remind when I was teaching religiously. And my students were comfortable with texting. And I sometimes my students, like my low, low, low students, wouldn't read the text, but their kids would read it. And And... I think, you know, it was fine. It was like one of the questions was, did you guys do your homework? As I text them all the time, have you done your homework? It's Sunday, tomorrow's school, and we want to make sure you're done with your homework. And the kids said to the mom, mom, it's time to do our homework. And so, you know, that's, that's important. So I, I really think texting. Video is more complicated. I would start with texting. Text them the link, have them push the, the link, They'll open themselves up into the Zoom room, and you'll be there looking at them. Hi, students. They'll love it. Um, so 
one lesson you're going to teach them about muting and unmuting, another lesson you're going to teach them about video, and you're going to go slow and you're going to take your time and you're not going to just throw content at them. You're going to have them do stuff and it might be small amounts of things. And um, so that's what I would suggest. And then I, you know, chatting is texting. So you can easily teach your students how to use a chat box and how to talk to them. So um, let's take a look at the chat again, because that's where I was here. And I use the chat box to, to, to type in key things to my students. So I might say to them how, and this is important in these days, how are you feeling? And let the class answer. And you need to show them how to get the chat box. So how would you teach them that? Does anybody want to answer the question? What would you do to teach them where the chat box is? It's down on the bottom. Share okay. your screen. And you just see chat, right? Mm -hmm. And so you tell them to click on chat and then ask them, what does chat mean? And then they learn the word chat which is, you know, not a word that we would normally teach a beginning level student, but now they'll learn it <laughs> and they'll be able to talk. So um, you can have your students introduce themselves. You can use the chat box to type key points. And, you know, I really like, and I don't know if you guys know about this, if you click on the three dots in your chat box, no, it's not there. It's, where is it that I want to So anyhow, I can send you a picture. Susan, I, are you asking about getting the transcript? No, I'm, I want to know um, the raise hand thing. I'm not seeing it right now. Will you raise your hand? It's in the participant. You have to be in the participant window, I believe. Right? Oh, OK. Oh, yeah, right. Thank you. So in the participant window, there's a place for the students to tell you to go faster or go slower. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if you if you click everybody click on participants mm -hmm. and then you'll see yes no go slower go faster and more right and there's thumbs up thumbs down clapping coffee break and break time so i have the students play a game where um, i ask them who can say yes the fastest and i have them all trying to say yes right away so go ahead and let's see who can say yes the fastest yes no, you have to do that. You have to use the mo the emoji. Yes. Mm. So go to your participants box, mm. and then go to when you at the bottom. You'll see yes, no, go slower. Oh, I see a lot of yeses here. Very good. Okay, so now. I'm going to be speaking like this, and I would like you to tell me what to do because I'm really speaking really, really, really fast. So what are you going to do to make me speak slower? Yep. So do you all see that you can see what's going on so that students can practice using this? And the more button. Give me a thumbs up, please. Very good. And so this is the kind of stuff, it's fun. It makes your students interact with you. And um, I, I, I would say, let's teach them how to use these tools. And you know, they're gonna be, I believe, I heard from the governor, he did a briefing on Tuesday that he's saying all schools are gonna be closed in, for the rest of the year. Um, yes. So. We're going to have to teach our students how to, how to communicate this way, and their kids are going to be communicating this way. And it's going to go for the, at least the rest of the year. The governor even said something about maybe the following year as well. So um, we, we're, the small steps you take now, this year, to, to teach your students how to do these kinds of activities, you're going to give them, you're going to give them so much more learning than, than if you just learned out of a book. So, you know, take this opportunity to really think about how we can all get more digitally literate. And that way, 
will will increase all of our abilities, including your students, because maybe after this experience, more jobs will be done remotely. So we, we need to teach them this stuff. It's 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 time. Susan? Yes. Okay, so there's a, I think there's a couple of questions um, as you were doing that activity about, well, what happened, what, what, you know, our students all have all kinds of different devices, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we make sure that everybody is able to actually do all of these activities, no matter what kind of device they have? Great question. And that's why I have these two pictures up here, because the top, so let me go to the annotate button again. This, this top bar here, audio, video, share, participants, and more, this is the phone version. And over here, this is the computer version. So the phone version to, to mute and unmute is here. The video is here. The share, to say, share your screen. I wouldn't recommend having your students share a screen. Um, but to do this, yes, no, go slower, go faster, it's this participants menu. And then the chat is on the three dots where you click more. You, yeah, uh, so I see the question about Zoom in the native language. You know, there might be, if you check the zoom.us website, they might have some um, tutorials in the native language. But I, I really think using your English and teaching your students to do this in English together as a class is a worthy, worthy thing. Um, we really need to let them know how to communicate online. How does a student show a real object in Zoom? That would be using your video. They would have to use their video. So, um, and you can even show, my video's on, isn't it? Anthony, is my video on? Um, it no. should be. Maybe it's not. Let me let me let me check. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. And my video's off. I'm gonna put my video on, Derry. And now I'm gonna share again because I want you to see how you can do things with video. So here we go. I'm going to show my students how to use their phones. This is a portrait phone, and this is a landscape phone. So now, um, Laurel, would you turn on your video? Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying, but my okay. laptop just cannot find the camera right now, even okay. though the camera is in the laptop. <laughs> Okay, so that's something you'll want to fix when you get off, off the class here. Definitely. Susan, okay. can you switch yes. back to your, um, to your live screen? We're still seeing your slides. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Now you see me? Yes. Okay. So um, let's try Kathy. Can you turn your video on? Oh, I see you have a video on, but I don't see you. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Kathy. Oh, we have two Kathys. We have a couple of Kathys. We have three, <laughs> three Kathys. So one of you, if you could show us, uh, do you have a phone with you? One of you guys? You're muted. You have to unmute. Yeah. Unmute so we can talk to you. I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted now. Okay. So go. show okay. us your phone. Uh-huh. Can you show me portrait mode? Oh, portrait mode, like photos and photos? No, just show me your portrait mode. Uh, portrait okay, that's that's landscape, so show me, yeah, there oh, you go. This way, okay. Yeah, right, so this okay. is how you can do this with it. Okay, so now what I want you to do, Kathy, one of you, or all yeah. three of you, mm -hmm. um, go ahead and see if, are you on Zoom with your phone, or are you, uh, just, oh, you're all on computer, huh? So. You can actually have your students post a photo from Zoom on their phone, from their phone. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to click on File, and I'm going to go to my computer, and I'm going to find a photo. This is the one I'm using because I, I can no longer do 
my volunteer work anymore. <laughs> it's okay. And I'm going to share a photo with you. Let's see. Here we go. So I could take a photo. Yeah, you could take a photo with your phone and send it, or you can. Um, okay. You can uh, just go ahead to the file mm -hmm. on your chat window, and you well, can let me, let me just on your it. phone. So everyone, so the so the photo has shown up in the chat now. What we're learning is that not everybody necessarily, depending on your device, can actually see, or sorry, can download that photo or access the photo. Double, you can't like just double click on it? No, Susan, sorry. For some devices, they actually can't see it. Oh. Like it doesn't show up in the chat. We're, this is something that we were having trouble with in, um, some of our previous webinars, like we posted some of the slides at the end of the session, but some people actually couldn't see it oh. because of the device that they had. And it tended to be iPhones and tablets, iPads. Older versions, maybe. maybe no, they even, even yeah. newer versions. It's, Melinda said something about two different, actually, sorry, Mac, like laptops and um, the iDevices have two different operating systems, and for some reason on iPads and iPhones, it doesn't always come up. Okay, so then we would have to share it another way. And let me show you what the other way is to share. So we go here. And then we would share it from your computer. So. But it's on my phone, so. Um... So you should be able to share on your phone, you should be able to share a photo. Correct, Anthony? She should be, I mean, she can share a photo and we can see it. I'm sure we can see it. Even if she, right here. Yeah, if you have a photo on your phone and then you hold it up to the screen, then we can yeah. see it. Sure. We can see it that way. But this, that is way. A, this is another option. You can share a photo this way by... Um, just bringing it up in the share screen here. I know it's, it's, it sounds like a lot, um, but. Awkward, but I think they haven't perfected this piece yet. <laughs> yeah, the computer piece, <laughs> but um, the, phone, the photo piece. And I think it's because the iPhones use a proprietary photo. Probably, yeah. Something like that, whereas Android is more open. Oh, okay. Um, so the other thing we were going to do is, is I was going to show you how to share your screen and um, so that you can have students share screens with each other so you can share your screen. So um, here I have one and I have, I have iOS and I have Android. You can see they're different, right? Can you see? Oh, let me get the bigger present button here. Okay, so this is an Android phone here. Let me go to annotate so you can actually see me. Susan, sorry, let me just interrupt for a sec. Catherine Arch, would you mind just turning off your video? Thank you. Okay, so this is, um, this is the Android, and then this is the iPhone, and the iPhone says share content, and the Android just says share. So when you click on share, <clears throat> excuse me, you get this box on the Android and you get this box on the iPhone. So again, they're all different, but you can have your students share photos this way, maybe. So that's another way. Um, and I would have, I <clears throat> would have my students try and you'll find out who can share and who can't this way. And then you'll make um, accommodations once you find out the situation. And, you know, again, I know it's not ideal. It's better if you could be in the classroom with them showing them this stuff, but we can't. So we go slow and maybe you have one class on where you figure out who can share what so that you can start figuring out, okay, well, Ramon can't share photos because he's on an iPhone, but he can share a Google Doc, or he can share a reading, or he can share some thoughts, you know, by typing. So that's what you need to figure out. Um, 
I wanted to, I don't see the web whiteboard on the uh, iPhone iOS click button, but I'm going to make a whiteboard so we can actually see what a whiteboard does because that's another way for you to actually work with your students. So let me stop the annotation and let me get you a whiteboard. Susan, while you're doing that, there's a question um, in the chat from Laurel that I don't quite understand. It's, Susan, can you teach us how you got the shots of the different devices and where you put them? Oh, that was just a screenshot from the web. I just went to zoom.us <clears throat> and I went to look up. Well, let me show you. Actually, that's a good question. So let me go back to, I'm going to show you that. Hold on. I'm, I'll, all right. So let me get rid of this. And let's go. I don't want to get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. OK. This is actually something good to show everybody. <clears throat> so this is the Zoom support page. And here they have everything you need to know. And that's where I get all the different screenshots from. So they have their one minute introductions and they have these getting started. So let's try getting started on Windows and Mac. And then he here they have all the screenshots. So I, all I do is I right click, save image as, and then I can put it into my um, save then go back to my PowerPoint. And we'll just paste it in there. Oh. Fantastic. Thank you. So that's how I do it. And everything you want to know about Zoom is on the Zoom website. So let's go try the whiteboard again. OK. I want to show you that feature because it's a lot of fun for beginning level students. Oh, I stopped my share. Okay. Are you seeing my PowerPoint or the Zoom screen? Zoom screen. Okay. That's what I thought. Once again, these questions that I'm asking, you ask these to your students and they'll answer you. And they're learning English by practicing real questions and answers. So I, I didn't go to the right spot. <clears throat> there we go. Now I'm in the right spot. So now I'm going to find my whiteboard. OK, hold on one second. Sorry. I got to find my whiteboard on here. I'm not signing, finding my whiteboard again, Sherry. Oh, I'm not seeing my whiteboard here. We'll just go on to something else right now. Hey, Susan, Anthony. Yeah. Um, I just want to do a time check with you. So we're, it's about, we're coming up on 3.15. So I don't know where you plan to be at 3.15 in your presentation, but I just want to yeah, check well, in with you and see where we are. Let's go to the tips <laughs> since we're there. <clears throat> so you got to start out slow and you have to simplify. So once again, I would say do not do a three-hour session with your students uh, synchronous, same time. Susan, sorry, can you switch switch to present, please? Oh, so, yes, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Then I can't write anything. That's the only thing. Um, OK, so start out slow and simplify. Do one tool at a time. Don't try to teach the students how to do everything at once. Start off with, maybe you're going to start off with annotate, because that's fun and easy and have people just, and that would be your lesson. And so you taught them the word annotate and they annotated the heck out of a picture, any picture like a kitchen or a living room. And then you're gonna teach them how to mute and unmute. And then you're gonna teach them how to use their video. 
and then you're going to teach them how to chat. So that's like a whole whole four sessions of class. And and I don't know what your schools are are telling you to do, <clears throat> but really face to face is very different from being remote with your students. And I think thirty minutes thirty minutes might not be in whole, enough time if you have a large class, maybe an hour, so everybody can participate and practice. And you might want to think about some things like the kids are home. So why not include the kids in this activity with the parents and let the kids do some playing so that because the parents are I, I'm telling you, I'm getting parents calling me up saying, I don't know what to do. You know, they're all home all day. I can't concentrate. So maybe include the kids. And then another thing to think about is all the nursing homes have closed down. Nobody can go visit at nursing homes anymore. If you have a, a nursing home, you could have your students create letters for people in nursing homes and send those send the letters to the nursing home so that you're doing something really valuable because they're there people cannot go visit anymore. So practice one tool at a time and then another thing to do <coughs> is to play with games. Um, some of you maybe have heard of Kahoot or Quizlet or quizzes. These are really fun games that the students can play easily on their phones. They're really not hard to learn. So um, spend some time playing around with them yourself and then see if um, you can use these as ways to help your students with vocabulary um, and have fun learning at the same time. How do you share those with them? Do so you... it, when you go to, you just have to have them download the app. They all have an app. Okay. So they download the app on their phone. And then when you make a game, you can just send them the link. And oh, they can just open they it, up. it on their own at uh -huh. home. Right? Okay. And then you can see when, well, it records their work. So when you get onto your Kahoot, you can see the results. I see. Okay. And so these are three that are very easy to use. Kahoot. Kahoot and quizzes are similar, but Quizlet is a vocabulary tool. Really, really easy to use. But Susan, um, just back to the Kahoot, well, I mean, all the tools, but so as the teacher, you can bring up the Kahoot, um, you can open up a browser, bring up Kahoot, and then run the Kahoot game through, um, through Zoom. You can, but it's not ideal because it's hard for the students to be um, in Zoom and on the and in Kahoot at the same time. Kahoot app makes it so easy for the students to download that they can play the games right there on their phone. Mm. So it's not ideal to do it that way, only because they're on a phone and they're in Zoom with you. They can see what's on the Zoom room, but they can't get to the Kahoot, you know, the game. Mm. They couldn't just open up a. No, Another they won't. No, no, no. That's. I think it's too much. Or open Better up. Just, okay. Just have them download the three apps, and you get a lot of mileage out of these three apps. You don't even need quizzes. You could choose. You could decide which one you like better, Kahoot or quizzes, because they're very similar. But Quizlet's great for vocabulary. And I have those. I thought I had these linked, but I, I will link them before I send Anthony the the slide deck. Um. Develop small group projects that ends with groups presenting. Now, you can't expect that the students are going to work in groups on their own, but um, in, in part two of this, I will show you how to do breakout rooms, and you will be able to use breakout rooms for your groups. But I don't know, Anthony, do you think we have time to do that? Breakout rooms? Um, how many more things do you want to talk about? Um, I think I want to talk about breakout rooms. I think it's important. <laughs> yeah. Let okay. me put you, I'm going to put you guys all into a breakout room. So, you well, so Susan, maybe let's hold on before you do that. So, so yeah, if people don't understand what's going to be happening, like in the next minute or so is one of the features of zoom is you can basically send your students into smaller rooms called breakout rooms within the larger Zoom setting. So what Susan as the teacher is going to do is she's just gonna automatically send folks to breakout rooms where there'll, there'll be a smaller number of you in each room. I don't know what the number is gonna be, but it'll be a smaller number. So just so people understand what's gonna be happening, we're not gonna be in this big room together 
temporarily, we're going to be in a much smaller room or you're going to be in a much smaller room with a group of students and it's going to happen automatically. And when you're ready to come back, I will give you a one minute notice. So it'll say you have one minute left so you can finish up your conversation. So what are you going to do in your breakout rooms? You're going to find out each other's name and you're going to find out we're not, this is what I do with my students, but what I'm going to have you do is find out uh, what level. And we'll forget these questions here. This is what I did with my class. I'll put that back later. But I want, in your breakout rooms, you're going to find out each other's names and find out what levels you teach. So I am going to be putting you in breakout rooms in a minute. We're going to create 38 breakout rooms. And you're going to be in there with four, five people, five people. Five people are going to be in your room. Some of them might not be able to uh, video with you, but you're going to find out everybody's name at least and level. So here we go. You're going into your breakout rooms now. But now I can't see anyone. Let me see. Where's participants? You have to turn your video on. I see Ison and Pamela. No, I, I see everybody. I don't see anyone. I lost. Okay, my... Pamela. Oh, okay, you're... I'm back. I'm back. Okay. You, you, you need to be on. Your video's off. That's why. Now I can't see where to put it. The host has stopped it. So I keep pushing OK. You can't use video because host has stopped it and I lost my toolbar at the bottom. Huh. I see you. Okay. Well, oh, then okay, you can now talk. Start video. Okay. You cannot start your video because host has stopped it. That's weird. I, I, you know, when I was showing you the settings, I might have, you might have come in after I played around with the settings. That's why I shouldn't have done that. Playing around with the settings during a class is not good. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just, see everybody else, so their video is on, but I yeah, can't get that's fine. You can talk this way. Just okay, go ahead well, and... my name is Pamela and I teach level one and level two. Okay. Stephanie, can you hear us? Hi. Hi, Susan. We haven't heard from Stephanie yet. Maybe she took a break. Maybe she took a break. Maybe she's not really there. OK, well, the rest of us have been able to share. Okay. Oh, good. So I'm going to bring everybody back then. We need to stop our video again. So everybody turn your video off. Anthony, why are people in the waiting room? Three people are in the waiting room. So how did you like the breakout uh, rooms? Okay, I'm right here. <laughs> okay. How many people were in each breakout? 
in this case, because we have 190 something people, there were five people in a breakout room. Mm -hmm. 38 breakout rooms, but you don't have a class that size. So you don't, you'll have a class of maybe 25. Maybe. So you'll have five breakout rooms. Hey, Susan, how are you? Good. So, I, I'm Susan. Grace. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me now? The whole cross together. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So turn off your videos. Off. Okay. Yes. My video is off. Good. All back. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're back in the main room, folks. So if you wouldn't mind again turning off your video and also turning off your microphone as well, so we can save the bandwidth. So this is a really good way to get your students talking together and doing small group work and a quick review of how we got there. Great. You can't, this is a problem with, I, I can't show you because I, you have to be a host. So you ha have to do this yourself, but I have here a video. How's that? We'll watch it. It's a two minute video. Now let's see if I can. Uh, Don't forget to share um, computer audio, Susan. I did that already, didn't I? Or do I have to do that every time I share? Check the check box. Okay. Yeah, you have to do it every time you share. Good to know. Okay. Thank you. So there's a little check box when you go to share that says you want to share your computer audio. And I want to, I want to, um, I'm going to try and make this bigger here. Video breakout rooms allow Zoom users to easily place meeting attendees into sub-meetings for group discussion, activities, projects, and more. To get started, log in at zoom.us and view the meeting settings section. Click to edit advanced settings and make sure that breakout rooms is checked. The next time you host a Zoom meeting, you will see the breakout rooms button at the bottom of the Zoom panel. While you are sharing your screen, the button is under the more menu. Click here to start using breakout rooms. Zoom will show the number of eligible participants. Choose how many rooms to create and let Zoom assign the participants automatically or choose to manually assign for more control, as we'll demonstrate here. Create breakout rooms to proceed. Your breakout rooms are now available and participants are still in the main meeting. Float your mouse over the breakout room to rename or delete the room. Click to assign participants, check their names, and click Assign again. Do this for each breakout room. Your participants are now assigned. If you want to change an assignment, float your mouse over a participant name where you can move the participant to another room or exchange the participant with someone already assigned to another room. When you're ready, click to open all rooms. This will cause your participants to automatically move into their assigned breakout room. The list will indicate that participants have successfully connected when the gray dot turns green. Meeting participants will be prompted to join breakout rooms where they can speak on audio, show their webcams, share screen, and chat as normal. They can also ask for help to send a prompt to the meeting host. Participants can also choose to leave the breakout room anytime to be returned to the main meeting. Return to the breakout rooms list as the host and you can choose to join any of the breakout rooms to offer assistance. You can broadcast a message to participants and a banner will be displayed. This is great for instructions or timing announcements. Again, float your mouse over a participant name to move the participant. When you are ready, close the breakout rooms. Participants will have 60 seconds to finish their discussion and will be returned to the main meeting. Open the breakout rooms menu again to quickly reopen the same breakout rooms or to make new assignments. To learn more, visit zoom.us forward slash live training to register for weekly training sessions. Need help? Visit support.zoom.us for 24 7 assistance. So, hopefully, that was helpful. And I have the link on the slide so you can actually watch it and then hear all the details. Um, so <clears throat> what can you do in a breakout room? You're seeing my, so I like to have three students in a room. That to me is, is good. If you have 25, you're gonna have to have, you know, four students in a room, but you break it up so that you have about three in a room. And then I have one student who's gonna be the recorder who's gonna take written notes of the discussion 
one student who's going to be the timekeeper because you're going to tell the students how much time you're going to give them and one student who I call the production manager. This is the person that's going to facilitate the conversation and make sure everybody does it. So we're going to do this one more time. I'm going to have you practice this one more time because I think this will be very useful for you. And um, in your group, you're going to have five people, but you're only going to have, let's see, production manager, timer, recorder. We're going to have three roles, but there's too many of you. So um, you're going to have five people in your room, but you'll only have three roles. So decide who's going to do the three roles, uh, roles and then you're going to um, you're going to answer a question that I have here. I will send it to you once you get in your rooms. And I see that you're all in your rooms. I'll send you the question to ask, and you'll have five minutes once you're in your rooms. So let me make the one more breakout room. So you can, now that you've seen the video, you can see what's going on. And I'm going to recreate, because I'm going to do new rooms with new people. And oh, we only have 174 people. So we're going to have, no, I don't want to have, I want to have more than, let's go with, it's asking me how many rooms do I want? I want to get like 30 rooms. Let me see if I do 35, oh, 38. I'm trying to get it so you're three in a room, 40. Okay, Could four to five. Explain, uh, the, the role? S explain what? I didn't hear you. Could you explain the role of the production manager? The production Could you manager. Explain the role <clears throat> yeah. of the production. This is the person who's going to make sure everybody speaks. Okay. okay, you guys don't have this problem, but your students might. You know, somebody takes over the whole room and speaks the whole time. Order. That person's going to write the answers down on a piece of paper. Okay. And the, and the timekeeper is keeping the time. You're going to have five minutes. Okay. And I'm going to send you the question once you're all in your rooms. Okay. I'll have, I'll have my mic on and be speaking during this time. Okay. Here we go. Teresa, can you put your mic on? Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Andrea. Um, I don't have video. I'm Andrea. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, are, are hey guys, I'm practicing with my phone, so I'm going to go into another small group. Good luck. Okay, bye. Okay, who's here now? I'm Andrea without video. Okay, why, why don't you um, tr uh, do the stop video so you can um, have your video? I think if oh, you- Oh, it's just been, it's just kind of permanent. Did you ask for help? Help is here. Yes, I did. Uh, I'm alone. <laughs> oh, well, I see Bob is with you and Lori's with you. Really, Hi, I Vera. can't see them. Oh, they're here. Can you hear them? Speak, you guys. Hi, Vera. Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought I was by myself here. But you see, you asked for help and it came. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Thank you. I think Dave left us. Uh, Karina, are you there? I'm here. Uh, do you want to be our production? Um, with some of the They functions. probably got about 30 other requests for their attention. Yeah. Yeah, it does say you can see up top that she's she's busy. It's like doing breakout groups and did you're busy you, and you can't. Did you ask for help? Oh, hey, Susan, we we didn't. We were bad students. We forgot what the prompt was. Oh, um, three things you can do in a breakout room. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. But we didn't get a question. I sent it, but I must have sent it too late. I'll send it again just so you can see it. Yeah. Did you, I'm wondering if I. I mean, should I be in, in, in room 45? Did somebody ask for help? Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm looking for room 45. Room 45. You didn't just hit join rooms? I did. Oh, but it and didn't take I, you to room 45? 
I did for a while and then I got kicked Knocked out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can hear you here, but I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to get you back into room 45. <laughs> so <right>. sorry. <laughs> That's like, I'll, I'll catch the next flight. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, I'll close the rooms in a minute and um, you'll be back. Okay. All right. right. Maybe she can help us. Did you ask for help? Yes. yes. Um, Pilar and I don't know the question. Okay. Uh, we, can, we cannot see each other, first of all, because the host doesn't allow me to turn on my video. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, you know, I, I think that I, that, that's a setting that they have in the Zoom room because there's so many people. Oh, okay. And, uh, normally, I would turn that, you know, you want to make sure that the students can start their video. But because you came in after they decided to do that, you can't do it. Okay. okay. But you can, the question is, three things you can do in a breakout room. Oh, you can meet each other? Yeah, well, go ahead. I'm going to go to somebody else's oh yay hey Blood, uh, what are we supposed to do find three things you can discuss three things you can do in a breakout room okay thanks we missed that that's for more beginning i have more advanced and i have a system class but i like that is a great idea <laughs> it almost makes you better than the classroom did you guys ask for help oh hi yeah I, hi susan michelle hi did you, did you need I, there's just there's just two of us in here did you mean to do that no somebody must have also gotten out so you know, I, I can't control who's leaving and entering. That's fine. But do we have 20 minutes? I'm just thinking. No, no, no. You only have five minutes. All together? <laughs> yeah. Or each? All together? Just all together. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you're giving us 20 minutes. There's only two of us. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Hello, Susan. Oh, Hello. Susan. Hi, Susan. You asked for help. Our help is here. Yes. Yay. Yes, so, we don't know what to do. Fine. Okay. You know, I, I broadcast it, but I probably broadcast it too early. So I'm going to broadcast it again mm -hmm. so that everybody can see it. What are three things you can do yes. in a breakout room? Uh -huh. Okay. Broadcast. There. Did you see yeah. it come across? Yes. Okay. Now I okay. see it. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And we have one person who's just a phone number and... and and it also is not participating. Right. Yes. Maybe they, they put their phone on mute and walked away. Yeah, yes. Also, that, okay. I, I know the things that you can do is assign a, a producer, assign, a, a, assign somebody who type the, take the notes, but I don't see where to. Oh, you have to write the notes. I want them to use pen and paper. Oh. oh okay. You can take notes with pen and paper. Oh, Some okay, tools are better, are not, right? Because we are not doing really the break room. We are only participating in a break right, room. Right, oh, right. We are students. Oh, yes. okay. that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. You're Thank welcome. You, Susan. No, 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 no that's, that's not, no, it's, it's uh, Publix, Community College. It's down near that's Mission right. Viejo, right? You're right, right, it's down in Mission Viejo, correct. Or Lake Forest. Uh-huh, no, Mission Viejo. Yeah, it's a nice area down there. Yep, yep. So where do you teach? Palo Alto Adult School. Okay. Yeah, I'm up in San Mateo Adult School. You're okay. San, are you at San Mateo? Yeah. I've been there before. I taught there at one time. Hey, Glenn, um, do you know uh, Sandy at San Mateo Adult School? Yeah, yeah. She just started teaching with us uh, maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah. Hi, I'm Janie from San Mateo Adult School. Hi, Glenn. Oh, there you go. Oh, gee, a lot of people. A lot of people. Uh, is... Uh, What's his name? The head of the department there. Um, why can't I think of his name? Well, Tim Doyle. Our directors. Tim Doyle. Tim Doyle is He's he the there? Director. He's He's the director. The director of the school Doyle. now. Is he still there, Tim Doyle? He's retiring in the end of June. Oh wow. Yeah, right. but so, he's been the director of the school for level. the last three, four years. Yes. Four. Um, before that, he he was like. Everybody's coming back now. Mary. Like what, is, what is that telephone no. in the middle of the street? What's happening? Oh my god. That's the
can hear you, but it made a horrible noise first. All right, I'm gonna help you um, meet people, okay? So one second. Are we in rooms again? Hi everyone, we're back in the main room, so if you wouldn't mind turning off your video and turning off your mic so we can um, get the bandwidth going again. Netta, have we lost Susan? Susan's muted. Oh, okay. I know, okay. Susan, we can't hear you. It doesn't look like you're muted, hon. Okay, there. All right. Now you can hear me. I have two mute buttons, one on my headset and one on my, uh, one on my uh, computer. So I have to unmute both of them. We discovered that in one of our breakout rooms. So we did some troubleshooting. Thank you, oh, Susan. Good. So, so I, I think everybody likes the breakout rooms, right? Are there questions about the breakout rooms? Is a teacher, okay. So I was really pleased on the second breakout room because you guys all asked for help. I have I got many people asking for help. And I went there and it was like, well, you asked for help and here I am. <laughs> but you can join any room you want. Now with, you know, 45 rooms, I had to be very only people who asked for help actually got me. Um, but if you only have five rooms, you can easily go through each of your rooms and listen into your students. Yeah, I left quickly because somebody else was asking for help. Oh, yeah, I remember your phone was there and you didn't have a, you didn't have, um, you don't have, yeah, make sure, I, I think in the phones you won't have that problem with the mic. Um, so you, he could, I remember I was in that room where you were. But what, where, do you mean, what do you mean my phone wasn't working? Well, uh, one person's phone wasn't work, didn't have a mic or one person didn't have a mic and we thought this person maybe left or went away or whatever. No, it looked, no there was just two of us. I did, one person was gone. Just me and one person, the person had no video. It was just two people. Yeah, but there was another person who we discussed maybe not really being there because we, I think they left completely because there's two of yeah. us. So um yeah. So so if somebody asked, how do you know it says right on my screen in big letters, breakout room number forty five is asking for help. Join breakout room and I push the button and I'm taken magically to your breakout room. So do they ask for Ray for by uh, raising hand on those? Uh, you know when you click. No, at the bottom of the screen there there was a little thing ask for help. Oh, there's there is at the something bottom like of your, that. Okay. Yeah, there's something that says ask for help, and a lot of people found it because I was doing a lot of a lot of help. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is very useful. And yeah, you know what I'm going to say about the, um, the, the broadcast message? I don't really like it. What I do is I assign the question, and I have the students on my slide. I let the students look at the question. Like, let's go back to, I have a question here. Yeah. So I, I have the students copy this on a piece of paper. The question, oh, you're going to see what I'm doing. Sorry. Let me share my screen again. At least I know that. You're not seeing what I'm supposed to see. Um, in this question, I would have the students write it down on a piece of paper before they go to their breakout rooms. And the recorder can do that job. So the recorder would be responsible for writing the question down. And then they go to their rooms and talk about it. And I only gave you guys five minutes. But you can give 10, 15 minutes if you want. And then you can travel around from room to room and spend some time with the students. Susan, sorry, can we just ask, um, there are a few folks who still have their video on, so if you're not Susan Gare, would you mind just turning off your video? Thank you. So truly though, when you're teaching your class, seeing your students is really nice, <laughs> but with 100 people, you can't do that. So um, yeah, so breakout, so this is why I was thinking with breakout rooms, let's go back to the tips here. And I'll go back to present. Develop small projects that they can do in their breakout rooms. And then at the end, you bring them all back and they present their projects. Um, give less homework. 
Students are having a hard time focusing with their kids home. They're distracted. <laughs> so your content level is going to go down how much content you push out, but your communication level is going to go up because you're really having to communicate to work through stuff. And then <clears throat> this might be hard, but failing will make you more successful. I really, I mean, I fail all the time. I, I give presentations and I fail many times. And I've taught classes that I've failed. I thought failed miserably. I remember one time nothing worked in my room. <clears throat> I felt like I didn't have any time to teach anything. And the students told me they learned more that day than they ever learned without a problem because they were troubleshooting with me. We were all trying to figure out what the problem was. So failing will make you more successful. I'm a, I am who I am because of all the times that I have failed. So don't be perfect. You don't have to start out perfect. You just have to start. And um, we're, there are so many things we're going to try to give you support. Katizla is going to give you support. OTAN is going to give you support. A lot of people are out there to give you support, but you got to do it. I mean, this is a, this could actually be the greatest thing that ever happens in teaching. So um, I really want you to encourage you to, to learn how to use, I mean, just get communicating with your students. And that's what I want to say. Um, do you have any questions? Susan, sorry, yeah. before we do that, so it's 3.45, we're scheduled to go until 4, so we, I'm just curious where you feel you are in your presentation. Do you feel like... Well, I, I, I have this, to, okay. and, and, and um, I guess... I'm just wondering, but, because, because we had talked earlier about, do, were you thinking about, do you, about a part two, or what do you want to do? You want to think I, about I would it? love to do a part two, but with smaller amounts of people so we okay. can practice. I, I think if people can get in there and get their feet wet, they'll feel com more comfortable. So how okay. could we do it so we could have maybe an, a, a smaller group of people more like maybe 20, 25, like a class worth so that people could really see what a class was like. Mm -hmm. And then we could do we could do a lot of practice. And Susan, are you suggesting um, only, is it more Zoom practice or is it more practice of something else? Well, we're gonna use Zoom. So what we can do is learn how to show, you know, teach content on Zoom using Zoom. <laughs> okay. So like, you know, having how, how to get the apps downloaded so that students and, and, and people want more Zoom practice, but I think Zoom practice OTAN can offer, right? That's like a tool. It's, it's a platform. Yeah, I know that. Um, so so we, um, we're actually in the process of scheduling um, some more webinars for next week. Um, I'm not sure that Zoom has come up as a topic, but we can certainly look at, you know, um, we can see about, you know, scheduling another Zoom session that might be, well, you know, I don't know if it's more of an intro session or if it's more of a moving but, on to teaching and Zoom session or what But Anthony, is, but. what I would like to do mm -hmm. is teach people how to use these tools in Zoom. Okay. With Zoom, you know, and okay. how, to in and out, how to get the students from the app to the Zoom, okay. you know. Maybe give instructions in Zoom and then tell everybody to go on their phones and do the activity or send them the activity in advance. And then you could use, that's what we should do is um, I give you an, I make a class and you guys will get some things to do in advance. And then you come in and I can show you how I would share the results with you and stuff like that. That sounds like a good discussion um, for us to have offline too, as far as like, you know, plans for the future. But um yeah, we may need a part two and maybe a beginning user um, Zoom. So we'll definitely okay. schedule that. Yeah. But, but I feel for, like for the, now, for as the, far as like wrapping up what we're doing here, um, do we want to go over anything as from any, any unanswered questions when we. I want to go over one thing that I see here that I see. Somebody said, can we divide up by level? And I want to say no, because I think it's not about levels anymore. I mean, you can differentiate when you use technology and teaching. 
you can differentiate learning so much more easily than you can in a classroom. And I believe that you can teach anything to any level, just depends on how you scaffold it. So um, I, I would like to, to just not, I mean, I always do low level stuff. That's what I do. But you can take anything I do and up it. And um, so, yeah. I don't know if we should do my levels. May I ask a question, please? Yes. I had a difficulty um, logging in at the beginning, so I'm not sure if I missed the part that uh, you show a document on the, how to show a document on the page and also annotating. Okay, Those two, okay. When you annotated, I just, came in and I don't know how you did that one. And I wonder if you showed how to show a document, like um, you bring it to the screen and work on the document with the students. No, I didn't show that. That would be a good thing for part two. Okay, so how about annotating? Is it, do we have time if you please? It's, it's in the video, it. so when you get the video, you'll see it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So also, because um, see, I've seen this question come up multiple times, so again, um, people are asking about recordings, or sorry, you know, recording of the today's webinar. Um, and they've also asked about the slides for today's webinar. So at OTAN, we're gonna work as fast as we can to get those things up onto our OTAN website. Um, Susan, would you mind maybe, can we just look at the OTAN website for one second? Yeah. Just so people know what we're talking about here. So- Do you um, wanna do it? I'll, I'll stop sharing. Uh, can I? Let me see. You can share. Okay. Also, Jennifer, do you have your hand up? Do you need? Do you have a question? Jennifer. Yeah. Let's see. Do you have a Hi. Um, do you? Can you hear me? Um, I have a question. What about having some of our higher level students come on, be trained with, uh, with Zoom, and then they could teach lower level students, so almost like in a Zoom ambassador program? That's a good idea. Yeah. And you know what else? I mean, I, could, I would love to train. I, 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 just for me, it's going to be great because I love teaching students and I don't get to teach them very often anymore. Um, and I'm locked in my house. <laughs> so I could help with that. And also think about this. You could actually join classes together. I mean, you could have virtual collaborations going with teachers from all over California. You could have like a beginning level. Okay, so two teachers get together and two teachers can, can work with the students can learn about each other from each class. So that's also something now you can do because there's no walls. You've wow. Walls. That's a really great idea, Susan. I mean, having, you know, classes that may be happening in North, Northern California and then classes that are happening in Southern California and actually doing like these, you know, almost like a virtual fear, field trip in that sense and then getting each classes to kind of visit each other and get to know each other. That's, that's really that's an awesome idea. And that's something we could do easily, I think, and with OTAN, right? <laughs> like you could have a clearinghouse for matching up people. I don't know about that. We can definitely discuss <laughs> some options, um, maybe just kind of an ideas webinar on what that might look like for teachers to really look at that. And I don't mind spending some time training students because like I'm locked in like everybody else. Sure. Susan, do you see my... Do you see my screen? Do you all see mm -hmm. my screen? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So again, um, just quick orientation here. So we're at the OTAN website. The address is OTAN.us. So right now on our homepage, um, we have this um, article, Upcoming OTAN Activities. These are actually for the, um, for the week we've just um, experienced. So we're going to create a news item or a, a top story for next week, which will have a list of um, the webinars that we have already scheduled, um, how to link, you know, how you can um, register for those webinars. Um, and the list is growing. So you'll want to kind of come back to this page often. At the very 
bottom of this page at the moment, because there was a question about it earlier, um, is about our office hours. So next week, we have three office hours scheduled, Monday from 1 to 2, Wednesday from 4 to 5, and Friday from 10 to 11. And we're, I think we're going to keep up that schedule for the time being, um, you know, and we'll just see what the response is. We've had some pretty good response so far this week. It's a really great opportunity for people to come in if they have specific questions about tools that they're learning about, like Zoom, for example. Um, come into an, an open office hour and you'll meet with OTAN staff and other folks that are there to talk about a wide range of um, things, activities, tools, things like that. So also when you're at the OTAN homepage, um, you want to click on this button here, COVID-19 field support. It's over on the right-hand side. It's the top button. So again, as I mentioned, we're trying to centralize things in one place for the field. So um, when you click on that link, so the very first section is the OTAN section. We do have our slides up from um, the two previous webinars this week. They're right there. You're, they're free to download. Go ahead and take a look at them. Um, we had an online tools one on Tuesday. We had a tips and tools for teaching online yesterday. Susan's slides will be up here as soon as we can get them up there. Um, and then we also have, um, we're going to have some stuff from CalPro and CASAS, the other uh, state leadership projects for adult ed in California. Also, CASAS has some guidance here. Probably we'll see some things in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, a few notices from the adult ed office at the state level. Um, we are trying to also provide some information about things that our students should know. I mean, in the middle of everything that's been going on, I think we've all been getting our, our mailings from the US Census Bureau to please <laughs> fill out the census. And we did so much work to get our students to do the census and now we can't now we've lost touch with them so we need to get back in touch with folks to make sure I mean if there were ever a time to complete your census form now is the time to do it so that California is properly accounted for and we get the resources that we need for these kinds of situations I mean there's no anyway I'll stop. Um, and then we do have some links to other resources down at the bottom. Um, if people haven't seen the California COVID page from the state government, please take a look at that. They actually have a section on education and what educators across the state should be working on and distance learning ideas, equity ideas, all that kind of stuff. So please visit this page often um, and you know keep on top of what we're trying to keep on top of as well. 